Uh, well, well, thanks, Henry. Uh, on Saturday evening, I spent my time in Glasgow at the Liberal Democrat conference talking about the future of the UK, and I said, there's good news for you. You've been talking about federalism for 100 years, and now everybody is talking about federalism. The bad news is that nobody can tell you what federalism actually is and how it would work in the United Kingdom. But people are talking about this in two ways. One is a way to try and deal with the Scottish question and find a way between the status quo and independence, which as we just heard from the earlier presentations, is the preference of a lot of both yes and no voters. And the second way is to try and knit Scotland into a pattern for the whole of the United Kingdom, rather than just having continual exceptionalisms. Well, federalism is two things, in fact. It's a specific constitutional recipe that's quite difficult to map onto the United Kingdom. Uh, and secondly, it's a general principle, a way of thinking uh, about government. And I would argue, in the second sense, it's more relevant than in the first sense. Now, as a constitutional mechanism, federalism says that you should have two orders of government, the federal government and the federated units, that they should have entrenched powers guaranteed by a constitution. They should be able to act within their own sphere of authority. Secondly, there should be some way in which the federated units are represented at the center. They should be able to share power, which brings the state together again. This can be done through a second chamber, a senate representing the units, as happens in the United States to some degree, and it happens in Germany. Uh, and thirdly, there's a, a mechanism for sharing the money that has some kind of agreed and possibly logical basis, but there's about to be a consensus about how we distribute things. We call it fiscal equalization in the technical terms. Uh, and it, quite clearly, in the United Kingdom, we don't have that already. So the search is for something that would serve to do this, to provide self-government, to provide influence at the center, to get some balancing of the money. The second meaning is a broad general principle. Federalism is just a way of thinking about dividing power based upon the notion that nobody has all the power, that power is dispersed, uh, and that separate places can have their own policy, uh, and that if they come together, it's on some kind of basis of equals because they're all represented in the second chamber or sometimes there's an intergovernmental conference and you can speak equal to equal between the various governments. Now, in that sense, broader sense, we don't have federalism either because we have an ad hoc constitution in the United Kingdom in which, as far as Westminster is concerned, the Scottish Parliament, the Welsh Assembly, the, to some degree the Northern Ireland Assembly, that's a bit different, are the creatures of Westminster, and Westminster could change them any time uh, it likes. Uh, it strikes me that in the process we've got at the moment, the Lord Smith process, we're going back to that notion, because it's the Westminster parties, really, who are deciding what to do about Scotland, and not the Scottish Parliament as a unit negotiating with Westminster. So we don't have much of a federal spirit. Could one apply federalism to the United Kingdom? In the first sense, the strict institutional sense, no, uh, and there's a reason for that, and it's called England because there is no federation in the world in which one of the, one of the units has 85% of the population uh, and the wealth, and ideas of having uh, an English parliament and, and then a Westminster or UK parliament separate from it don't really make more sense because it would be the English parliament that was spending all the money uh, and effectively c controlling the, the major services. So an English parliament is a non-starter, there's not a lot of support in England for federalism. Uh, recent surveys have shown people in England are thinking an English parliament might be a good idea, but they haven't really thought through it. Uh, and there's very little uh, support in England for this notion of federating the state in the sense of changing power at the centre, because one of the things that happens in a federal system is sharing power. Can one have federalism in the broader sense? I think we can, and I think that's where we're going from. The notion that power is not simply handed down, but is genuinely entrenched in the devolved uh, authorities, that the Scottish Parliament should be an actor in its own right, that it is a political arena in its own right. 
uh, that there should be some way of trying to fit the whole of the UK together, because what has happened after the Scottish referendum is this debate has spilled into England and into Wales. Northern Ireland, again, is, has, has its own uh, agenda, and that we can't just deal with Scotland without thinking about the rest of the United Kingdom. What would this look like? It would look like a very asymmetrical form of federalism. You can't have an English parliament, I'm arguing. Uh, they talk in England about other things. Well, you could have city regions. Uh, city regions have come back into fashion. I remember in the early 1970s, they set up city regions in England. They called them metropolitan counties, uh, and now they've just discovered the idea as though nobody had ever thought of it before. Uh, we, 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 we've had that. It is not an answer to the West Lothian question. It is not, nothing whatever to do with federalism, but maybe that is what people in England want. So federalization would mean addressing the government of Scotland, entrenching the Scottish Parliament, similar arrangements in Wales and Northern Ireland. It would mean listening to people in England and giving them what they want. It would mean addressing the West Lothian question. Maybe we won't have an English parliament, but something like English votes for English laws in, in some uh, manner. Uh, and it would mean the idea of sharing power, not devolving power, would become the basis of the constitution. It would mean integrating the nations and regions of the United Kingdom into the center. It would mean radical reform of the political center because one thing that has not happened since devolution is the center hasn't changed. Parliament hasn't changed. The treasury hasn't changed. The cabinet hasn't changed. The civil service have changed. So we should be looking at the center and at London, federalizing London. Uh, and finally, it means addressing the question of the territorial distribution of resources, which is wrapped up into this question of the Barnett formula, which has no answer, but it's a question we can't get away from and is going to be at the center of the political debate from now on. So no, we're not going to become a federation, but we can use federalism as a guide to the direction in which we can travel to try and resolve the complicated and overlapping problems of the United Kingdom. And this requires a radical change in constitutional thinking not just here in Scotland, because we've always thought federally, but particularly at the centre and across the United Kingdom as a whole. <laughs>